All right, we're back, and we are back at the homestead. I know there's been a lot of views on the cabin build. It's one of our most viewed videos, actually. Uh, we're really excited about that, and we're really glad that people are liking it. Um, so guess what? Here we are again. Um, it doesn't really have anything to do whether <laughs> whether people like it or not necessarily, but uh, we are back out at the homestead. Same old scene. There's the cabin in the background. It's kind of raining a little bit. It's been raining a lot down here. All my wood is wet. <laughs> Bunch of wet wood right there. And I got all kinds of stuff going on. So basically, we've been on a little bit of a break from the cabin build and homestead um, work for the last almost month. Uh, we worked a lot of work at the fourplex, and you guys got to see some of that stuff on our um, videos that we showed about that during the summer. And we did some videos of recreational stuff that we did because, hey, you know, you got to have some fun. You got to do something besides work all the time, right? Um, and then we, 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 I went hunting. I did some bow hunting, uh, saw some moose that were shooter bulls but we couldn't get close enough to them to shoot them um we had a pretty fun time but other than that definitely didn't get in a moose so that was a bummer my bow hunting moose is really hard so it's not really mosquitoes it's not really um a surprise yeah i'm not really bummed out about it that much uh so i'm gonna give you guys a little tour real quick of what we got going on here and uh, what we're gonna be doing to move forward with the cabin build well here we are this is essentially kind of different for the views because um, you guys are used to seeing the snow on the ground and all the sawdust and everything everywhere. And that is the bench that I was cutting the logs on. I have not touched anything. I've left everything just like it because we've been so busy at the fourplex. I just kind of dropped everything here and jumped onto that project. So my one older ladder is still just sitting out here. Here, let's try this. My older ladder is just sitting out here, and my other little crappy old step ladder, it's sitting out here still. And then you got the you got the pile of uh, ends and pieces that I cut off of the wall logs that we were working on last time. And here's right here is where the logs we got for the wall that we're going to be skinning and siding and stuff and using to put up back here, up on here. And we're going to continue going up. But that's not until this next step gets to happen we got to do this next step no matter what and i'll explain that here in a second so we get here we got our old logs that we gotta we gotta keep these because these are all good wall logs we're not getting rid of those that's all firewood now because it's too short really to use for much else this little pile of stuff here is also firewood there's this big pile of branches here we got to get rid of that <clears throat> so now you can see the cabin is still sitting on all these little gravel pads that I made. And I tried my best to pack mud and stuff around them because as it was breaking up and thawing out, it started really wiggling around and moving around. And um, it's just not a good foundation. I'm just going to call it out straight up, you guys. It's just not a good foundation. Um, and I kind of knew that it was going to be pretty crappy or rickety or however you want to say it. But... I had to do something to get going in the winter and um, I just wanted to get going on it and lay it out and get started. And so I did that. But now here's where the big beginning is. So normally you'd probably, you're probably thinking like, okay, well, we're back at the cabin. So he's just going to start, ooh, it's muddy. We're just going to start, he's just going to start, you know, putting logs up here and we're going to keep, you know, gooing it. Well, I can't really do that yet because we met, we did so much work at the fourplex all summer that it took almost all summer long. It's getting to be the end of summer now. We're going into September, and if we don't get a solid foundation under this cabin before the freeze up happens and the ground is frozen, I am going to be trying to build an entire cabin on this rickety, you know, this, this joke game here that I basically invented myself. I mean, this is no, there's not a, a playbook for this I didn't like you know read about it online or you know learn about it in a, in a how to build a cabin book or something like that like no I just kind of came up with this idea myself 
and my, well, my wife and I both together came up with this idea ourselves just to try to figure out how to get started in the winter without having any way to predict where the ground's going to move. Um, we came in here in February is when we kind of start January, I think, is when we started doing the holes for the first holes. And the snow and ice was like a foot thick where I had been plowing it and plowing it and plowing it. Well, it had built up to like a foot thick of icy hard packed snow on top of the actual ground. So I couldn't really thaw the ground out to get down to what ground where there was first. So I just had to just dump these gravel piles, these little piles on the ground and then set my posts on top of them and then cut my little cups and all that stuff. And so I think I did that. That was before I started filming. Um, so you know, you guys didn't get to see any of that stuff. But anyways, we gotta move the cabin. No two ways about it. Gotta move the cabin. We gotta move it and where we really want the cabin actually is back there. So, not a huge deal. The plan is going to be, we're gonna clear all these things, items back here. We're gonna move the ladders and stuff, obviously. Then we're gonna move this bench and we're gonna get it down here somewhere. Uh, I'm hoping maybe in this area somewhere over there maybe or something. I'm gonna take all of this firewood cutting. Um, that's our firewood cutting uh, sawhorse, if you wanna call it that. And, and then a bunch of just pieces that didn't get used and little end pieces and chunks and stuff I've been throwing over here. And this is where we're gonna have a firewood area. So at least for now, anyway, this is going to be a firewood area. So I'm going to be moving this dolly sawhorse thing. All of these trees are going to get cut into smaller lengths and stacked up over here nice and neat out of the way. So we can actually bring in all of that firewood over there. Right? That little, those little pieces there, that's all firewood. And then this little stuff over here I already described, that's all firewood. So that's all got to go over there. Then this whole corner will be cleared up and stuff will be compacted and pushed over into that corner. That table that with the blue tarp on it, it'll be brought over here and then put in this area so it's just kind of off to the side out of the way so I can still work on it if I need to use it for sharpening my chainsaw and stuff. Um, it has a vise on it underneath that. You can see the green camo tarp sticking up back there. There's a vise underneath that uh, camo tarp. So that really helps me when I'm sharpening my chainsaw and, and you know, other little things here and there. So I'm gonna move that bench over here. Then that whole area back there will be all cleaned out. Then what we're gonna do is all this wood will be gone also. Then we're gonna bring in the excavator and we are going to just start um, getting rid of some of this area, this grubbing back here. My plan first is to go in, once I use the excavator to move some of these logs and stuff around, and I'm probably also gonna try to use it to move the blue bench um, and you know, a couple of these other logs to stack them and stuff. It's just really handy to use that thing to move stuff around that's heavy. Um, and it saves my body a lot of work. So the tractor can do that, you know, the tractor can, the tractor can grab stuff with the grapple and pick it up and move it. But the tractor has to be driven this way and then backed up and then turned and then pushed that way and like it can't there she is right there my lovely i love you branson I love you. uh no that thing cannot really just go you know from here and then just turn and go over here or 300 to go 180 degrees and say okay i'm over here you know, and I want to turn all the way over here and put my stuff down over here, you know. It, it, it can't do any of that. So the excavator is an amazing tool for sure. Um, so that's what today is going to be all about. I'm going to try to get all this cleaned up and I'm going to try to get this prepped and ready for us to start working back here. So then once we get back to this area here, it'll be all cleared. This, this you know, tools and all these things will be out of here and those logs will be out of here. And... Um, and we're going to start just cutting down trees. All these little skinny spruce trees are going to go down. And this little patch over here is going to go down. And then we're going to just work about 10 to 15 feet wide. Just going to work our way down, cutting the trees down. And any trees that are large enough that we want to save for potentially milling into lumber or 
using on the cabin or whatever um, those ones will get cut into certain lengths and uh, probably 12 foot lengths and then stacked off to it on their own pile and then all of the rest of the smaller logs that are you know not super small um, will be used for firewood and they'll be cut up and stacked in a different pile and then all of the skinny little shrubby logs like for instance you know something like this spruce tree right here would be good firewood this spruce tree here would be good firewood but like something something little skinny stuff you know gosh I'm having a hard time finding something real skinny like this like this one right here uh, that's hard to see really you can see this this one right here he's about two and a half inches wide so something like him and he's green you know so he's basically just a, a bush at that point um, so we're, we can't save every little ounce of this stuff for firewood um, so we're gonna have to rock and roll with what we got so that's what's gonna happen today and uh, I hope you guys come along and check us out and watch the whole video and leave a comment let us know what you think and say hello if you want and that's all you want to leave a comment saying hello that's fine too I would like to say hello to everyone hello to all the new subscribers thank you very much for coming on the channel thank you very much for coming along the journey with us this is gonna be a lot of fun and uh, you know stay tuned we got a whole day of uh, moving stuff around ahead of us Yeehaw. all kind of jumbled together in here you know all these that big birch in there and then these different spruce trees well I just cut right through them with my chainsaw like you saw look at how this look at that wood I'm gonna just cut right through the whole pile of wood I've uh I've run a lot of 45 and you know 40 cc chainsaws and smaller ones and stuff and this I gotta tell you man if you want to try something that really rips some wood fast. You ought to get a 65 cc chainsaw, or maybe if you're strong enough to hold it, get a 71 or 72 cc chainsaw, and then, oh my God, if you have a farm or a ranch or something, and you got a lot of wood to cut up, and you wanna do it quick, you want a big chainsaw. I love it. And it has a manly feel to it. <laughs> yep, you know it. I'm sure people are like, what firewood people are looking at this like, oh my god, look at all that dirt and oh, that's so gross. And how could you do that with your firewood? It's all wet. And this is like firewood for five years from now. I mean, it's we don't even have a way to burn firewood up here yet, really, or a building. So it doesn't really matter. We're we are going to be cutting all of this firewood that we're stacking up in different places and we're going to be chopping it up and splitting it and stacking it in a fire in a woodshed which we are going to build behind the cabin over here in the woods but it's just a work in progress so try to understand when you see this nasty mess over here that I'm not really this isn't really my ideal wood pile if you want to call it that I'm just doing this because I really need to get clearing land and get moving on this foundation so we can get it done before winter so just in case anybody thinks that looks pretty rough which I would agree with them, 
you know, if that was some firewood you're planning on using anytime soon, you know, that ain't, that ain't the way to do it. <laughs> but we're, we're a work in progress homestead and we're just, it's just me. There, I mean, there's nobody else here. Okay. That's just the woods. That's it. That's it. There's the woods and there's the excavator and there's me. And so uh, same thing with the one camera angle and all that, you know, I, I wish I could have more cameras and do more stuff, but I, it's just not there. Someday maybe we're working on it. I gotta move all that wood. Those are my good builder logs and all those little pieces. Those are all firewood. But I forgot to turn the camera back on before I did that. Well, as I move all that stuff into place, in the wood pile over there where it's gonna go, then I can move the blue bench. pretty easily able to just lift this nice and gently when my uh, Tia and I did this late earlier in the wintry time we have all we have is a tractor and it was a lot jerkier and harder to do it so now I'm gonna lift up I got it up I'm gonna try to put some little pads underneath each side and then I'm gonna lift up this side and put some pads underneath these so maybe I can stop it from trying to sink down in the mud it's kind of muddy now look at her got the chainsaw and the bar oil my water my hat, a helmet, whatever, ready to go. And I have a few more minutes for the end of the day. So I'm gonna start cutting down trees. The next day I basically spent all day today cutting down trees started right here in this area you know next to the cabin cabins right here 
I started over here and I kind of worked my way across this to back to there and then I worked my way back so now I worked my way back all the way to the edge of those trees there and there's kind of a open cove there and I cleared all the trees that were right next to the wood pile and I'm probably going to clear more trees going that way but there's so many trees right now laying here that it was really hard to walk over them so I had to stop I'm gonna have to just do it piece by piece you can see over here kind of a better I don't know angle of how wide did I got it so I just made it a little bit wider and I started going this way all the way back to there and then I started to go that way all the way back there the cabin's gonna really end up being kind of right in this area right here after we do all the foundation work and all that gravel and compaction and then concrete foundation and then we got to figure out how to get it off of those little pier stumps that I made and <clears throat> see what I was walking on there that's not easy to walk on <laughs> I almost fell down no nope, no falling there's the back wall of the cabin you kind of see the the new uh, wood makeshift firewood area for now like I said yesterday when I was talking it's very makeshift I was gonna point something else out real quick these little red dots right here on these logs tomorrow I'm gonna be running an excavator and you guys are gonna get to watch a lot of that and you see these logs with the red dots and you're probably gonna be like what the heck do those red dots mean well I'll tell you I like to keep people informed those red dots mean that those are potential builder logs so those logs are gonna go on the wall and if they're even big enough diameter they might end up being a post you know that goes up and down vertically a support post well, we'll see about that I got about a half an hour before I gotta go so I'm gonna start up the excavator and get it warmed up for a minute and then I'm gonna try to just start messing around separating some tree branches from the trees and spend my last half hour of the day doing that I don't want to cut any more trees down today area here I got to clear and grub all the way down it's gonna look just like this dirt here when I'm done this whole area that I cut the trees down all the way around the back of the cabin all the way over back to there it's gonna look like brown dirt just like this and I think I should be able to get a good portion of that I should be able to get a good portion of that knocked out tomorrow we'll see one of the nice things about having a whole day to run the excavator because I laid out so much I cut down so many trees that I have plenty of room to run the excavator in time before I'll need to cut more trees down one of the benefits of that is, is it's really been raining a lot and today I worked in the rain a bunch and that's kind of why I didn't shoot much because it was kind of rainy and my camera just kept getting wet and I could I, couldn't, I mean you can't see through water droplets and so you know when it's raining I can sit inside the excavator and stay dry. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Uh, you know, I mean, hey, chainsaw a bunch, excavator a bunch, chainsaw a bunch, excavator a bunch. That seems to work pretty good. Um, I'm also going to use the tractor um, to help me. That's right over there. You can't really see it. There it is. Yep, I'm going to use that too um, to move the branches and brush, you know, um, maybe even some of the grubbing, depending on what, you know, again, for fun facts, I call grubbing all of the moss and stumps and wet leaves, all that stuff is grubbing. Everything else is either trees or branches or tree tops, which are basically branches. So. That's how I separate things. I got a firewood section, 
it'll just be tree, tree trunks essentially that I'm saving for firewood. And then I'll have a whole smaller section, much smaller section uh, for builder logs, which is those ones will have those little red dots. This is the third day of messing around out here back at the homestead working on clearing area for the cabin to move you can kind of see behind me there's the cabin just looking straight at it like normal and then this is straight off to the side here we're gone that way a little ways and then I'll sit together we're gonna go down up here this is how wide we're going to go, and we're going to continue that direction and then work our way that direction behind the cabin as we go. I just want to show you kind of what I got going on here. I'm saving all the builder logs over here on top of the cabin frame, and then I've got this big wad of stuff right here is grubbing from right here. And what I'm going to do, I just I just stopped for a quick lunch break and I'm getting ready to start again. I'm going to take this log out of here. I cut it right back there. I cut these two little skinny spruce trees down. I'm going to shove those back in there. I'm going to rip out, I'm going to yank that tree out of there and toss it over here so I can put it in the firewood stack, which is those logs stacked up back there. Um... So I'm going to yank that guy out of there so he's not in the way. And I'm going to clean all of this green moss grubbing out around the edges of these white birches. So it all looks like this here all the way over. And then I'm going to come back here and take this. I'm going to throw it over there on top of that brown, nice, clean dirt area I made. I'm going to also, before I throw that stuff up here, I'm going to pull back all this stuff. And I'm going to cut this little skinny spruce tree down and then these two here and then I'll have a nice open path going this way. And this wad of stuff is going to come up here and be stuffed in the woods back up in there as a temporary grubbing pile. Alright, that's how it's going to go for now. That's the plan anyways. So. Again, a little update on what's going on. Got the tractor over there in the background. The Shed Logic Village. All of our stuff. All right, now let me show you what's going on over here. So we have the cabin there. I moved the excavator out of the way over there because I made a little change in plans. So last time we talked, you guys were set up over here, kind of looking this direction. And I did exactly what I mentioned earlier. I just cut those trees down, and then I ripped that little triangle shape of uh, moss and stuff out of there and pushed it all up over there. And uh, that's that. We were talking before, I said I'm going to move up in here and then I'm going to go this way and then I'm going to turn and go that way. Well, here's the thing. I started to think about that and I realized, you know, that's probably not a smart idea because this area over here, all these trees are going to get cut down over here. This whole area is all going to get clear cut. Okay. The house is going to go right back in there. So one thing everybody's got to keep in mind, you know, while we're talking about all this you know, here's this little cabin right here, but that's not the that's not the end all be all of this property here. I mean, that's just the beginning, folks. The uh, this is the deal. Like cabin first, so you can stay here and develop the property further, and back in the trees adjacent to the cabin back there uh, is where our house is going to be, and we have 
grand plans for our house. We have plans for a large garage and a very nice spacious house for all of us with um, everything that any normal house would have, but we're gonna try to do it as off-grid as we possibly can. So we're thinking about trying to do solar power instead of hooking up to electricity. Um, we're gonna be using a lot of wood heat for wood. Um, sorry, <laughs> wood heat for heat. A lot of trees cut down. We're gonna be cutting all of these trees down back here. Um, let's see, I'll roll you back. So back here behind the cabin, here's the cabin right here. Here we are behind the cabin. This is where the cabin site is really gonna permanently be, is right behind the cabin in this area. Well, behind that, directly behind that, we're gonna have all, you know, obviously clear much more of this area. We have plans for a pole barn and a nice, a, a, you know, a nice permanent woodshed. Um, and also a woodshed that we can expand. So, you know, as I do more and more firewood collecting and I get more and more wood collected and I need more places to put it, I can build onto my, you know, onto my already existing structure and, and quickly and easily stack more firewood. Um, so we've been using lots of firewood around here. So, you know, I'm always looking off into the trees here because I always wonder if there's a moose or something that's going to come just quietly trying to sneak through here. And tomorrow's opening day of rifle season here. So I'm going to be packing my rifle every day. <laughs> Hopefully we see one. But anyway, so I decided to change plans because if I put everything, if I take all of this grubbing and everything from back here and from over there and I put it all over there in that little area I made yeah I can stack it up real high and I can probably fit it all over there but eventually that's gonna have to be moved so I don't want to stack a lot of stuff over there I kind of needed to do that because I needed to get a little area going over here so I had some more room to move and maneuver but what now what I'm gonna do is to be smart and try to save myself more work later is I'm gonna head in real careful because this this is the cabin right here right can't hit that I want to ruin my hard work and then I got my little bench right here and I don't want to hit that I made that bench long a while ago which that's not that big of a deal but I use it so I don't want to break it because then I won't have it to use it so what I'm gonna do is carefully trek my way in here and pull these little logs out of here and spin around and set them over here behind me so I can get at him with the tractor, which is what I've been doing this whole time. And then um, is moving the trees with the tractor. And then I'm gonna pluck as many of those out of there and then I'm gonna grub my way and throw the grubbing ahead of me that way and keep working my way and I'm gonna make a grubbing pile, the monster grub pile. It's gonna be back here in these trees over here because if you can tell, this is our little, this is just like a wood cutting processing area right now. If and when we have time to chop some firewood up and start stacking it up, um, you know, this is kind of maybe where we're gonna start doing it. But other than that, if you look beyond, behind the greenhouse here and the other sheds, that's grubbing stumps and all kinds of pile. And that pile just goes and goes and goes all the way down behind those sheds. So if I keep putting grubbing over here then I have kind of a uniform a uniform a uniform grub pile you know that's sought after I don't know I don't know ladies what do you think do you think it's really important to have a uniform grub pile in your life I really think it is I don't know I don't know where y'all are from or what y'all do where you're from but you got to have a uniform grub pile <laughs> So we're gonna try and do that. We're gonna try and keep this as uniform as we can so we don't have as much work later. I wanna make a quick blurb and talk about uh, the future of the channel. So we've done a bunch of recreational stuff and that was great. Uh, we started out with the cabin build and now we're back on the cabin build. And there is a hunting video and some other small things coming up um, before you'll see this video. But from now on, just so you guys know, from now on, it's going to be all about this thing right here. All about this. We're going to be out here. We're going to be here every day of the week. We're going to be cutting trees down, 
clearing area, uh, moving the cabin, like I already mentioned, onto a solid foundation, and uh, all that great stuff. So if you guys like building cabins in the woods, you're in the right spot. I'm inside the excavator. That's excavator with an X. Don't get confused with some people that say excavator. That's not correct. Sorry to say. It's excavator. E-X. So, we're inside the excavator. We're cranking up the throttle. Hopefully you guys still hear me. I'm gonna jerk you back around. Boom, now you're forward. You're in there. You're in the cockpit of the excavator with me. And we are grubbing our little butts off. We are grubbers. This is gonna be weird because I think this is gonna probably bounce around a lot. I'm gonna try to hold it with my feet. The tripod. So that it's not too awkward and bouncy but we'll see how it goes ripped up these stumps now we're shoving them back out of the way now we're gonna see what's right here can we get this that we made earlier and we're gonna get really close to the table but we're not gonna hit the table no 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 we're just gonna clean it up touch the table a little bit okay okay we touched the table a little tiny bit okay it's okay we're not gonna hurt the table Here we are behind the cabin. The excavator's right there. We're going this direction. Swoop, straight across the back of the cabin. I'll turn you guys around. You better see. So there's the back of the cabin over there. There's the back back corner that we were working where the wall is, you know. We kind of cleared that area out over there yesterday and we put some grubbing in a pile over there. Now we're over here and we've made our way in down to dirt and now we're kind of cutting our way across here and we're gonna work our way over that way all right so that's what's going on today a little bit at a time a little bit at a time Okay, here we are at the end of the day three or four. End of day four. Airplanes flying by. So you can see the cabin here. We've cleared next to it. We still have that, this whole little area here still to go. And then as you come this way, you're gonna see now we're at the back of the cabin, right? This used to only be a little bit wide and then there was trees right here. Well now there, now there's some space. Got the pile of logs going there, got all the pile of debris and grubbing and everything over there. And I'm working my way this way, putting everything back this way as I go. And then tomorrow I should be able to finish this 
little area up here this little l-shaped area should be able to be finished pretty easily tomorrow and then um, right in this area right in front of us here is kind of where I'm gonna start excavating all this dirt all this brown dirt is gonna go out of here into a pile and uh, we're going down to the gravel and then we're gonna smooth the gravel out as nice as we can and then uh, rent a compactor and compact it and we'll be ready for some um, concrete grade action once we have our concrete grade set and compacted then we're ready for concrete itself I guess I should say mixing concrete mixing action <laughs> that's what we get to do and making forms uh, make some forms and mix some concrete and pour them in and off we go so you guys can see there you go one more little fun fact probably anybody's been watching the last couple days I don't know if you noticed this the way I park the excavator like this I park it like this every time and there's a reason for it it's not just because it needs to stretch <laughs> no it's because there's grease zerks that you have to have the bucket angled just so to, to reach off the backside and the bottom of the ram for the thumb right here if the thumb isn't pushed down or you know pushed down like that some you can't get in at that zerk there and so um, then the other reason is is because I'm not as tall as a giant NBA basketball star so I have to be able to reach that one up there and you can see that's about as high as I can really reach I mean that thing is is about even with the tips of my fingers so it's pretty high up there so if you don't have it boomed out like this and laid down as far as you can and can uh, you're gonna need like a stool or something to get at that grease zerk up there on that top ram <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I'm using this thing you know uh, in the branches and in the brush and I'm really you know ripping out stumps and and all that good stuff so I've been greasing it every day. Um, I use it every time I use it for more than a couple of hours. I, you know, I grease it really good. So I'm greasing it in the morning every day before I use it. Um, and tomorrow, guess what else we get to do? Oh, more fuel. Yay. Yep. You always got to have fuel. That's part of running equipment. And it really is nice to have equipment and makes things really easy and smooth, man. But you got to have that diesel fuel. And you got to maintain it. The situation is done pretty much. This whole thing has been cleared all out here. And we are clear behind the cabin. I'm going to go walk over here. Let me get my finger out of the way. Let's see here. I'm kind of doing this in a hurry because it's been really raining and it just stopped raining for a second. And I'm going to just show what I've been doing real quick. So here's the back of the cabin. There's the beginning of the foundation grade. This right here, you can see that's gravel right there. So you can see the mucky dirt only goes down a couple feet and then you're into the gravel. I haven't measured that yet, but that's about two feet roughly. So you can see the gravel and it just, it's gonna, we're gonna make this whole area gravel like that. There's the giant wad of stuff that we ripped out of here. There's all of the trees that we were able to save for firewood. There's a little pile of dirt and small amount of gravel that came up out of this test hole where I was just kind of quickly seeing how fast, or actually how deep um, the dirt really was behind the cabin here. And it's about what I suspected. So everything looks like it's gonna work out pretty good. Okay, now you can see what it looks like behind the cabin. Big pile of stuff. Looking back out towards the road where we came from, towards the driveway. All right, well, there it is. Welcome back to the second week of the cabin moving situation that we're going through. And you got the excavator behind me right there. I just started digging about 15 minutes ago. I'm gonna set you guys up. I'm gonna show you here. I'm going to set you guys up on this little tripod here on the bench looking 
right at the dig area. You guys can watch as I'm gonna basically continue to cut. I've already cut up against the edge of the cabin pretty much as close as I want to be. I'm gonna keep cutting back and cutting down to the gravel and I'm gonna move over, cut back some more, probably come in here this direction and cut back this direction and then tie it all back in cutting this direction again and as far as I can go I might even go back further I don't know we'll see how that goes I am gonna mass up a giant pile of dirt over there and there's no way around that um, but we have the trusty tractor with the bucket and we'll throw the bucket on there and we'll haul it away and we pull and material this way towards us and picking it up move it over there in that pile we had a little box burning session this weekend so we used our little miniature hole that I made for that but anyways as you can see you can see now if you look closely you know obviously this is just all gravelly stuff right and then if you look at the edge here you can see the dirt the brown dirt as it comes down the edge till right there where the gravel layer is and that's where we're at that's how i that's how i know where to stop <laughs> is you see the gravel and then you stop All right. How do we like it? What do we think? Got some. Bring it down into the grade in here. It's not perfectly flat yet, but it's pretty close. I just schmoozed it in real fast. Um, there's some stuff on the side here. I'm gonna have to clean up over here and. Get that a little more out of the way. I know there's some piles of little bit I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna use the tractor with the bucket on the front. And I also have that box blade on the back, so I'll be able to grade this out um, pretty darn smooth. So, however, now I have this giant pile of dirt. Now, what do you guys, how long do you think it'll take me to pack all that out of here? Man, oh man, dirt everywhere. So, yeah, you got a pile of dirt. Goes there and goes all the way back pretty far over the backside. So, I guess it's time to start packing dirt and put the bucket on the tractor get doing that that's the next step and we'll maybe we'll be doing concrete forms and pouring concrete before the end of the week moving pretty quick I like it we're on day two of the second week of working on the foundation grade for the cabin don't mind that that's just the tractor over there coming away <coughs> hopefully you can still hear me okay Move myself you can see me. Okay, now we're down in there. All right, so see behind me, there's the cabin. You can see the big pile of dirt over there. And then the big pile of dirt and grubbing and all that stuff you watched me throw up with the excavator the other day. You can see I got it cleaned. I got it all cleaned out nice and flat down in here. Kind of ran into an issue over here. This is still some muddy dirt in this area where I'd have to cut down even deeper to get to where the gravel is. So I might not come straight back with the cabin. I might have to kind of offset it over this way. So I got this giant pile of dirt. I got to move out of the way. And I'm packing it behind the tractor into a temporary pile. That is not where that dirt is gonna stay. That's just a temporary pile. 
but anyways um, I got down in here with the box blade and I smoothed this all out this hasn't really been graded 100% yet because I'm gonna move over a little ways over here probably into about the middle where the pile is or so and cut all of this down still so I can have um, good solid gravel to put my foundation on Hey guys, check this guy out. I got a camp robber, or also known as a gray jay, and it is like all over me. It's tried to land on me twice. I think that's what it was trying to do. I really don't know. I've never had one get this close to me this many times. I don't have any food. Look at him. And he's lip grabbing my, my glove. I'm kind of weirded out by this. This is weird. Holy cow. There's a whole group of them. Okay, go on. Go on. Hit the road. This thing doesn't want to leave. I don't know what they're after. But this is weird. I mean, I'm like... I mean, I'm six, eight feet away from the back of my truck. <coughs> and now I think... There's a whole group of them over here in the trees fluttering around. Okay, look at that. He just landed on the ground three feet away from me. And then he jumped back up and flew up into that tree right there. This is really weird, you guys. I'm not sure how to take this. I kind of have to get my work done. Went to Lowe's. Everybody's favorite place. I've got all my concrete here. Not all of it, part of it. And I've got nine forms that I built at home, which I didn't really video because honestly, that seems pretty boring. It's just putting, cutting some boards and putting screws in the ends. I mean, it's super boring, easy going stuff. So I figured nobody would care to watch that. So then there's our rebar. I bought, I bought pre-cut rebar because yeah, I gotta be honest with you, I, I don't have a lot of extra time, and it's not really that expensive to buy it pre-cut. And the only cutters that I have, like chop saws that I have, are, well, I guess you can put a, can you cut rebar with a skill saw? If there, is there a special disc you can get? I'm still looking at this camp robber, he's still sitting here eyeballing me. Um, is there a special disc you can get for a skill saw? I don't know. Maybe leave a comment down below if you know better. Um, about that. I'm not sure. I know most guys use a chop saw to cut rebar. So I just didn't want to hassle it. I didn't want to buy another tool. I already have a bazillion tools that I only use every once in a while. So I went with the Lowe's setup. One and a half foot long, half inch rebar. You know, that stuff right there. Woo -wee -wee. Yep. That's the stuff. I got because I'm cheap I'm cheesy so why get a big roll of uh, wire and do it the hard way when you can just buy the ones that are already wired up to just zip um, rebar together with so they're, they're it's pretty affordable <laughs> so I bought a couple bags of those and we got a pile of rebar we got our bags of concrete we got our forms and now you're wondering if you've ever done concrete before, you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, genius, I'm not seeing a well on your property anywhere. I haven't seen you use a garden hose yet. So where's the water going to come from for this concrete project? Well, I'll show you. We are going to use da -da -da, the five gallon bucket method we're gonna use lids we're gonna drive down to the lake that's right here by the property and we are gonna dip the 
bucket in the lake and get some water. Put the lid on the bucket, put it in the truck, bring it back up here, and pour it in the mix with the concrete and mix it up with a shovel. We're doing it ourselves. I didn't run a concrete mixer or anything. This is a pretty small amount of concrete. It's not like a crazy amount. Okay, so one loaded part of it. So that stuff that's in the back right there is stuff that I'm hoping to get to use today. So I don't want to unload all of it because what's the point of putting it down there and then having to pick it back up again and move it over there. So uh, I got to get the grades straightened out because it's been raining like crazy and it looks horrible. Uh, I got the tractor back here warming up right now. So I'm going to jump on there and I'm going to do some work over here and I'm going to try and straighten this out. I'm going to throw you guys up over here on the side and let you watch. All right, you guys just watched me for a while messing around over there with the tractor and trying to get the grade level before I put the forms down and the concrete and stuff. So now we get to see how good I did. And the way we do that is <coughs> a laser level or a laser grade level. Hard. And these things flip and you flip them back. That's a pretty nice little tripod. Okay, there's your tripod. Got it right there. Take your head unit, which has the laser that spins around inside it. Screw that on there screw. It's not super critical which way it's pointed. It automatically levels itself too. Your receiver and your grade stick. And the same thing. You slide this out. This is a really nice kit. I really like it. Uh, we got it at Lowe's. Um, I don't remember how much it cost but it was not super cheap. But it does work really nice, and I gotta be honest with you guys, we're gonna have all kinds of great work at the property here. Um, you know, between the cabin and the house and the foundation, you know, stuff and septic, and I mean, all kinds of stuff. We'll be using this thing a bunch. So, anyways, you get this guy going like this. And then go. Now, I did not check this at all while I was using the tractor. In fact, I don't know if the, my wife is going to change the way the video went or she's just going to speed it up or what, but I spent about an hour and a half on the tractor and I did not check the grade at all the entire time. This, what this is right here is just based off my eyeball and my feel of the tractor underneath me. So let's see how good I did. Okay, that's great right there. So what that means is, and the thing's basically... This is straight up and down. So what I'm trying to explain here, I guess, is for those that don't know, I gotta get you set right here. So that laser over there spinning around and it's making a perfectly flat plane at the exact height that it's at. What I did was I went right over in front of the laser right over there, which is where the first concrete foundation pad is gonna go. And I checked the ground right there and I set this to read off of that level right there in front of the right in front of the laser level so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna go from there around and we're gonna check all the different spots and see how close we are right here is about where the first one's gonna be and that's why it's dead on grade okay now turn that now everywhere I go around here Depending on how far off the ground or into the ground the bottom of this goes is the difference in grade between right here where I just between there and let's check here. This is about where the next one's gonna go. So it's just barely off the ground. That means it's on grade. Grade. That corner of the cabin. This is where the corner 
the back corner of the cabinet is basically the same as most of the other places. It's about a, just about a half an inch higher than the ground. I think we did our job, ladies and gentlemen. When the boss shows up and they ask, well, did you get it graded flat? You can, uh, you can guarantee that we done got it flat. <laughs> Probably wondering like what in the world is this thing okay this thingy this apparatus this attachment in the correct term that's an attachment uh, it's actually for my father-in-law's skid steer but he doesn't use it very often and um, it's basically for getting in the ground underneath a stump and like ripping it out from underneath I guess it works pretty good but um, he's got a grapple and a regular bucket and an excavator so I mean honestly this isn't really something we constantly use but we're gonna use it today because I figured that I only have two by two forms so they're two foot by two foot square that's that's what it is so how do you pour in there with a big wide wheelbarrow. I have a wheelbarrow, it's like three and a half feet wide. That's too wide. Well, I got my regular bucket on my tractor. I could mix the concrete in the bucket and then try to pour it in there, which would be a lot easier than pouring it by hand because you got the machine helping you pour it in there. If I do that, then I'll have all this, this big wide bucket and trying to dump, you know, dump it all in there out of my bucket and it'll all come out all at the same time. But if I had a little narrow bucket, you know, like this a little narrow guy I mean you see how narrow this is it's not very big so what I can do but it's nice and deep so I can mix my concrete in here and then I can just pour it out at least that's what I'm gonna try to do I'm not sure if anyone's ever done this before but I'm doing it so here we go So now what I'm gonna do is, I got my straight line across the front here. And I'm gonna do another one going from here, this corner, straight back. And I gotta work my way out carefully or I'm not gonna be able to fit my tractor around the end to make it in here if I'm not careful. I don't wanna do, I'm not gonna start pouring on this corner over here. Once I get my boxes set, I'm going to start over here on this side and then work my way back and then back and then out. Got my boxes laid out. I've got all my stakes in, in the exact center of where I want the form to be. Now I've got to level the boxes so they're perfectly level and then make sure that they're square with the string so they're all lined up together as they go down. Can you see? It's right on the edge of the bubble. This one this way. It's pretty good. Still get it like this. 
pretty good. Okay, here we go. We're gonna mix up the concrete in the bucket and we're gonna dump it in. We got a rebar placed in there in a little weird pattern I just made up. This is by no means any kind of professional job. It's just a cabin in the woods. Okay, according to the bag, it says it's gonna take two of these bags to do this much square footage or however you wanna say it. All right, A premium lake water. A workout folks you don't need to go to the gym you just got to work with concrete every day you'll be super ripped <sighs> glad I bought this shovel today I just got this thing Little narrow shovel for mixing. I think I think it worked pretty good compared to trying to use a big wide shovel. Now I'm gonna pour it right here into this form. The box was wrong, or the bag was wrong. And you can see it's not clearly all the way up to the top. So I'm gonna have to get a little more and fill it up all the way up. More concrete, try to finish this one off. I gotta say, this bucket seems to be working pretty good. That was a lot easier just tipping it and pouring it in there than it is like shoveling shovel full after shovel full in there or trying to take the wheelbarrow which is like wider than the form by uh, six inches eight inches on each side and try to like tip it on its corner and like pour it out of the corner of the wheelbarrow I mean this is way easier I'm not trying to say that everybody has this sitting around, but I had it here, so I figured I'd try to utilize it. And it's working.
that form is done and it looks like it came out pretty good. Pour some in there. That's it. That's all for today. I don't have enough time to do more, so I'm gonna clean this bucket out really good because you don't want that concrete to get stuck in there. It's gross. It won't ever come out again. So I gotta take a little time to do that, and then I gotta head out. Okay. Uh, in my last step, I gotta put the pier cup inside the middle of the square. So here's a pier adjustable uh, four-inch cup. <clears throat> you can use them in pure blocks, you can use them in forms, you can use them whatever. So you can put it in and then this nut screws down, which would raise your foundation if you had to adjust it. Maybe the ground settles or something like that. So I'm going to put it in the center and set and then I'm going to go home. Okay, watch this guys. We got this, this is a Ziploc bag. It's like from my sandwich that I brought today. I'm gonna try that to just keep the concrete from settling in the threads and then it'll make it really hard to adjust these later. So I'm not sure if this is a thing or not, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, there's one form. That is our one form we completed today. Spent a good amount of time putting in and leveling those forms. And as you can see, I don't know, I didn't record myself, but I put stakes in on the edges so it would not move around while I was pouring the concrete in. And I did the same on these ones. I got stakes all around. So tomorrow, I'll pour that one and that one. And maybe I'll get to the middle one in the back and the corner one. Maybe I can get four done tomorrow. I don't know. Hoping to get with the rhythm and keep on going with it. I'm just doing the best I can by myself in the rain most of the time. So, uh, you know, this is what we do to keep our homestead moving forward. Um, we haven't done a lot of explanation about this, but I'm going to quickly touch on it. We've got 32 acres here and we want to build our dream house out here. But at the same time, we don't want it to just be a dream house. We want it to be self-sufficient and we really want it to be essentially off grid. Um, we would like to not have to pay electricity bills. We would like to not have to pay, you know, um, natural gas bills and all these other kinds of bills. We'd also like it really a lot if we could get off of the food industry's standard of food uh, that you can buy at the grocery store and get onto our own homegrown food here that we're planting in our own ground and growing ourselves um, the plans in the future for having some chickens probably um, you know for meat and for eggs so, you know stuff like that you know traditional homestead kind of things um, so all the videos in one way or another really are showing us trying to further that ideal of a homestead that's self-sufficient that's off the grid that no one you know if everything collapsed and there was no energy source from the power company and there was no natural gas coming from the natural gas company and they uh, let's say they stopped making gasoline you know and other you know who knows um, things can change in our world and um, my family and I would like to be prepared for it so I also really have always wanted to you know kind of live on my own in the woods so this is as close to that as i can get <laughs> uh, so anyways wrapping it up here is the foundation of the cabin getting started that ties in because we need a place to stay up here we showed you a video before of the shelter logic shed that we turned into a little area to camp in but that's not quite good enough uh, you come up here in the winter time and want to work maybe you want to stay overnight 
you know, I mean, it's going to be tough to sleep in a tent in the winter time. So the idea is to <clears throat> constantly develop the, the homestead, um, working towards the house, you know, um, clearing land, clearing all these trees behind me here. You know, the house is going to be over there in the trees where they, there's a bunch of trees now. So we have more trees to clear. We have a lot more things to do and, um, we can only do that in the summertime, but the rush on the cabin deal is if we can get these foundation pads in, then it doesn't matter when it freezes. It doesn't really matter because it's all done. The grade is done. Everything is done. And we can sit all winter long working on the cabin um, because you can't really cut trees down and grub the ground in the winter. You can until the snow starts to get deep. And then once the snow gets deep, then you're trudging around in snow up to your waist trying to cut down trees, which is not only very hard, but pretty darn dangerous to be honest with you so um we don't do that that's not how i do it i don't want to i don't want to break my leg or get hurt out here when i'm all by myself so if something like that were to happen i would be in some trouble um so no we don't do that we're gonna have the cabin ready to work on in the winter time so i can always be over here doing that and then um when summer breaks out we we continue clearing trees and working towards the house um and ultimately the full homesteads this is my Second day of putting in forms. We've got we got a little bit of excitement going on. We did a short today. If you guys want to see it, go check it out on there on our channel. We had a short on this form right here that I did. I mixed mixed up all the concrete and poured it and everything all in one shot for a short video and check it out. It's on there. So we can continue with what I've been doing. So Yesterday, we did this one, over here, this is the one, right here. and then this morning I just did this one, and now we're going to do this one, right here. So, I'm um, going through the concrete pretty good, it's about three bags of concrete almost to fill up one of these forms, so... I don't have enough concrete to do all the forms, obviously. I only had about 10 bags, so I'm going to have to go back and get more. And my estimate's going to be about 28 bags total to do all these nine forms. Um, and I'm probably going to end up getting 30 bags just because, you know, you might have a little bit lower grade on, in one than another. You know, you might use a little more concrete than another one or something. You just need to have extra. So you don't want to run out. So today, I'm going to run out. That is going to happen. But that's okay, because we can keep on working. So we got our little station here. We got our station where we're diligently ready to mix concrete. We got our bucket and our water, our shovel, the bucket with some water in it. We have two, two 80 pound sacks right here. And then there are two more 80 pound sacks in the shed over here. So we can definitely get this form done. And I had a little tiny bit left over from when I did that one in this one. I want to show you guys one more thing real quick. Check this out. My plastic bag technique actually worked. I can pull that right out of there if I want to. I'm not going to because it's not quite cured all the way it takes a few days for this stuff to completely cure but you can see it's hard I'm stepping on it I'm standing on it I weigh 225 ish <laughs> and uh, there's no marks so it's definitely cured enough to walk on this right here is brand new and we are not gonna walk on that Well, somebody give me their opinion. I like it. Really like the shovel, but got it yesterday. Brand spanking new. That sure don't look new anymore. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all, it already looks five years old. <laughs> I can just, I, you can see where I'm prying it against this. And it's just scratching this fiberglass stuff right off. So I don't know, it's supposed to be, you know, super tough and everything, and it seems tough, but that's, that's one day of using it here on the homestead. So it still works though. Works really good for this. Okay, we're back and we're we're doing the tricky part. We are making sure things are lined up. So I've got my string here going that direction. That that direction. This is really hard, you guys. I don't know if anybody's ever tried this, but it's hard to videotape yourself and point and everything is backwards. Okay, so I string lined. That one back there is the one we did yesterday that's dry. And you can step on it and everything. I just showed that earlier. Now I put the, the, the cup is inside it, the adjustable cup. And I hooked the string line right to the cup. And I ran it right down the middle of that one. Down the middle of this one. And I've found my center mark based off of my square mark. Because I put these three in yesterday. Boom, boom, boom. And then to this, this one here. Under my right above my finger, that's the front corner of the cabin on that side. This uh, over here is the back corner of the cabin. So now I'm working my way across the back. And there's the back in the middle. This is the other back corner right behind me. The middle of the cabin will be right about where that stake is lying crosswise right there. So, now I have made sure that this measurement from this stake to the spot in the middle of this pad and from the middle of that concrete pad with the cup over to where that stake is are identical measurements. They are identical measurements. They are both 22, two and a half inches. 22 feet two and a half inches, which means my building is going to be square. Well, let's hope. <laughs> um, I mean, as long as nothing moves, I guess, then technically, yes, it's going to be square. Uh, as long as these go exactly where I have the stakes uh, set. So anyways, right now I'm going to, I string line this so I can set my, my cup in here. And I can get it dead center in the middle of the cup right where I want it. And not only dead center, but what if I, if I just measure it, right? So yesterday I measured this one. That's how I found the center. So I just measured it. And I found the center. Now, problem is, is what if this form here is a hair bigger or a hair shorter or whichever? Then that measurement center to center, you know, this way and this way is not going to be the exact same. So what you do is, is you take a string line and you run it from one form to the other. That way you're going to get the exact straight line middle from with, with a board or a log in this case, in that cup there, straight down to this cup over here. And it's going to hit right in the middle of that cup. Does that make sense? I hope so. That really worked really well, actually. That little baggy trick. I mean, I could just wiggle that thing around. I pulled it out and looked at it, and the threads are clean. Nothing got through the bag. So, you take the nut, run all the way up. Take your, well, this today had my strawberries in it. Take your strawberry bag, and you wrap it around. There, like that. So, like so. And you have a prophylactic for your adjustable cup. Now, to find the middle this way, because we got the string line to tell us right where it needs to be, you know, this direction, side to side. 
but we're gonna have to measure the box to get it right in the middle. And we know that it needs to be right at that right there. There. Okay, so we try to set these. That one over there is fine. It's great, it's perfect, no problem at all. It's the same as this corner behind me. This one here in the middle, however, not. It was high. It was high by about to an inch and a half to two inches almost. So I'm out of breath because I've been shoveling this little area right here. So now we're gonna slide the box back in there and see after we trust it up a little better. getting close it's getting a lot closer Now you can see, I'm not sure how good the camera's showing it, but the string, I'm not, I forgot my darn laser level at home today, guys. This would have been a perfect thing to use it for, because I could have easily just put my laser on here and been like, wait a second, that form is, is that much higher than these other two, hold on. But luckily I saw it, I just kind of could tell by looking at it I had the string going through here to line them out and it was higher up it was up here but still I could see that it, this box was a lot closer to the string than these other two boxes were so I was like well I better check that with my string real quick and just see how bad it is man it's bad it was the box is five and a half inches tall and the string was only like three inches off the grade so it was about two and a half inches too high so I cut all the material out with the shovel. Let me get you guys close up to it. You can see kind of what it looks like. You can see how I dug out all around the corner, all the way, you know, all the way around each this way, that way, you know, and then set the box back in. Now, what I'm going to do is um, cut some of that material that's in the center. I got to get that out of there so we have the correct amount of concrete in there. And then I'm going to double check my measurements and uh, the level of it and then set it and put the rebar in. Give a like if you like hard work. Perfect. Gotta like it. Nice and perfect.
Anybody ever said having a homestead's easy? Might not have really done it themselves. Okay, yeah, well, I had to move a little bit out of there because that was an overpour. Can't see much in there. But that's not that big of a deal because he just doesn't spill out the sides, you know, and it's whatever. We, uh, we're bringing the, taking the forms off and breaking them off and taking them apart. This, I don't really have any use for a bunch of two foot long boards really so um, traditionally if you were doing you know long narrow forms you'd have long boards you wouldn't cut them you, you rig them together with the with the stakes and you know all that and then you just take it apart when you're done and you use your boards over and over again this isn't the same thing we're just we're making a permanent foundation for this cabin and we're trying to make it nice and square and flat and we're sacrificing some wood to do it Okay, now I'm going to show you guys how I clean out the concrete. As you can see in the looks like it's all covered in the concrete gray slop. I'm going to use this bucket of lake water and I'm going to rinse it out. Right, eat off of that. Martha. Martha would approve. You know it. You know she would. I mean, that's pretty clean. It's Alaska Wild Mountain family clean. I'll tell you that about now. Okay, here we go. This is our little wrap up for the end of the day today. What we got done, we got that one poured, that one poured. We set these two. We had to dig that one down to grade. But it's now down to grade and it's matching this one over to that one. All the same. We put the rest of what we had left over to fill this up in there. I just finished setting that cup right where it needs to be in the center. And it's centered with this one and that one. And everybody looks good. I mean, I feel like it's coming out okay. You can see how square everything looks. You can see things are pretty square for the most part. That one in the middle looks like it could be cocked a little bit. But hey, it's a cabin. One thing I'm happy about is I know that the stake that's in the middle of this box measure over to here is the exact same distance as that orange stake that I painted that's there over to this cup here. So we are 100% square at our corners. We'll have one more that goes in the middle between that corner and this. We'll have one that goes in the middle up in the front between this corner and that. And then we will have one in the dead middle between this middle one and that middle one over there. So. Coming along. Gonna head 
down a lake, get some water to mix concrete. without you guys uh, I was not able to film yesterday really what I was doing it was kind of a short day anyway but I did get quite a bit done um, I got last time you guys were with me we did these two but this one was only partially done that one was completely done yesterday I finished this one off oh, that's working. this one over here and then I came ahead because I had mix left and I wanted to finish and I actually got this one poured also. So that leaves only three left. One, one there, one in the front corner, one in the middle of the front. <clears throat> so now that you guys are all up to speed, I'm going to start mixing some concrete. Um, and fitting this form up and leveling it. Okay, let me get you guys updated a little bit. So we just poured. You can see this is the back of the cabin behind me. These are the ones we started on over here. These are the back ones, or the side ones, I should say. And then we came across the back, which is where I'm standing here, here, and then here, right here, this one. This one. Now, we're pouring, we just poured this one, and then we have this one in the front middle and the front corner, and we're out and done. What do you guys think? Does it look like it's coming out okay? I think it's coming out pretty good. I'm happy with it. forward and all done there's there's the corner where we started we went there and then there across to there over to there to here to there then here and then here last and that way I was able to use the tractor as I worked my way around you know and kind of worked my way out I didn't have to try to be in between them or drive over the top of them or do anything weird where I might actually bump one of them with a tire or something which would be bad because then they'd be completely out of place and you have to start over so that's that I will uh, set the cup here in a little bit and my next job my next task is checking grade on everything with the laser level and moving this big pile of dirt here and also need to move that pile of dirt over there and I gotta pack it all 
down below. I just realized I got one more thing to show everybody. So there's the final form we just poured in the corner. And I was just thinking to myself, oh, I wonder how much concrete's left in here in the old bucket, you know, because I'm just going to have to waste it because I don't have anywhere else to put it. So uh, I looked in there and <laughs> that's all that's left. It was exactly 26 bags of concrete. 80 pounds each. And ended up being just about three bags per form. Nine forms. Pretty excited about that. I hate wasting stuff. Okay, everybody. This is it. Thank you very much for watching. This video covered our phase of putting in the foundation grade and foundation for our cabin. Um, one step along the way on the process of building the homestead out here, we got to get our cabin built. Um, in the winter time, I kind of have to have something to do. Otherwise, there's not really much going on. Um, the snow gets too deep to cut trees down and you can't drive the tractor through stumps and stuff when they're frozen to the ground. You can't pull them off the ground when they're frozen to the ground with the excavator either. So. Winter's kind of a uh, no clearing, no cutting kind of a thing. You can early in the winter when the snow's not that deep, you know, maybe until December or something. But around here by the middle of December to end of December, the snow's, you know, two and a half, three feet deep. And it sucks walking through that. <laughs> and it's sketchy with your chainsaw, you know, you're trying to stumble around and there's logs crossed underneath the snow you can't see. And I mean, it's just a really dangerous way to go. Um, so anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more because next out here at the homestead, we're gonna, besides moving this dirt pile and the other dirt pile I showed a second ago, all these trees here going this direction are all getting cut down all the way that way. Which means there'll also be trees all the way this way cut down. So basically, I'm going to widen this whole area out probably another 40 or 50 feet. Um, chainsaw the trees down, wham, 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 and then come in with the excavator, pull the trees out one by one, slide them off to the side into their different piles, some being saved for building the cabin, some being saved for firewood, um, and possible milling. If we get some bigger birch trees, we could potentially mill with. We do have a few that we were saving. Um, so anyways, that's what's going on and uh, thanks again for watching. Have a great day. There it is. All complete. All the cups in. Everybody's ready for the cabin.